Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today um, I'm just doing a little walkthrough for this networking game which I found and have completed. Uh, I found it quite hard and I couldn't find anyone else having a sort of walkthrough. Uh, I found it very difficult and I would appreciate some sort of help. So I thought I'd just make a quick video showing some of the um, all the levels and how to do them and maybe explain them a bit and try and help you if you're having any difficulty with them. Let's get started. Um, also, I believe this game is called... is from Netsim. Uh, I don't know if that's the game or the sort of the company sort of thing, but it's free. Uh, a link will be in the description. And um, yeah, let's get started. So, first off, uh, this is quite an easy level. Um, it's basically just trying to show you the UI. All you have to do is create a packet by using that plus button. That will make a packet. Uh, you don't need to fill in anything, but you will need to click apply or update. And then simply hit the uh, the go button and that will transfer your packet. And that is effectively how uh, networking uh, networks work. So obviously data will be transferred transferred from one computer to the other. Um, not the best pers person at networking, this is why I'm learning, but uh, I know a bit of knowledge. Uh, so this is also demonstrating, so obviously these little purple circles are your packets, which is a collection of data, of I think bytes and bits and uh, whatever is in there. So to complete this one, you have to put the host name, just like the IP. So obviously this IP address is Alice, in theory it would be numbers, but it's almost like a, a DNS, which are a domain name system, I believe, uh, and it's basically more of a visual rep representation of the IP address. And so you'll need to fill in the, the sender, I believe this is the sender, and then that is the receiver. So if we hit apply, Sender is sending data and then to this receiver computer. Uh, so next is ping. Pinging is very useful because it lets you know the data you sent uh, has been received. Uh, and I think it is used quite a lot in trying to troubleshoot networks and just sort of generally some of the pro data protocols use this. Um, so what you have to do is obviously have the host name, which is that computer there, and this server. In this instance, it's Google. Uh, and then you'll need to put the proto, which is ICMP. Uh, that is the sort of command to ping. If you read here, but it's fairly self-explanatory. And you will also want to have it so it's repeated at four. Um, so I guess it's just uh, ping it four times and make sure um, it it works reliably. I guess that's why you want to ping it four times. Sometimes people do it one. Sometimes you set it so it keeps pinging over the minute. Make sure ev everything's working continuously. Uh, so this level is about uh, routing. So obviously your computer will be connected to a, a network and that network will have a, a router, possibly a modem as well. Uh, sometimes they're generally both together, like in a home networks. For example, I have, I'm on BT, so I have a home hub, which is a collection of a, a router and a modem. It means I don't have to have two separate devices. However, in a more complicated network, you will probably have a, a switch, a modem, and a router. Um, to do this level, though, uh, it's quite simple. You just put Bob, which is this com computer over here. Uh, that will go to the router, and then that will go to, who is it? Carol. However, for some reason, this seems to work fine, but it comes from Alice's computer, goes from her router to 
this router and then back to that computer but I might have actually done that wrong but it still works so that's a W in my book uh, so this one's about modems which you did hear heard earlier a router by the way is effectively just a very more complicated switch while a modem actually lets you connect to the internet something I've, uh, I've learned um, so to do this they want you to ping through a modem to the server and then for it to come back again this is quite an easy level uh, very beginner stuff but if you're um, a noob and you're just starting out and it's, um, it's quite a simple thing but you need to know and understand the fundamentals obviously we've just gone from that computer to that through a router very similar to that a previous tutorial um, sorry a previous level so this is IP spoofing which is quite useful to know so basically pretend you're someone so I'm going to send a bit of data from Alice which is this phone and I'm going to send it to Bob which is this computer however I'm going to pretend I'm this computer over here Carol's computer and when I send it it's actually going to come from me go to uh, Bob's network but when Bob receives it it's going to be the data is going to look like it's actually come from Carol I think that's how you can get a around some sort of blocking uh, or if you want to sort of hide the original connection so the stealing packets level is quite hard uh, you may have to retry quite a few times to get the uh, the timings perfect but um, effectively all you have to do is have Charlie and Alice or these two um, sorry all right let's try and sort of steal the packets I think you mainly want to make sure you can get the packets that Charlie sends. Hopefully that can get those. There. So it's it's quite hard. Um, you don't have to do much of the folders. It did take me a, a few tries to um, actually get it right, but that's effectively how you do it. And it's um, you'll you'll have a lot of trial of an error in this one. Uh, unfortunately, I can't tell you the exact times of when to do it, but it's if you watch watch the video back, you should be able to uh, find uh, when I'm sort of clicking it. I'm trying to uh, so when data is getting sent from the phone or sent from the server I try and send a sort of packet around the same time so it can um, when it they all get to, to the hub actually um, when they all get to the hub I can actually take that data or at least copy that data towards my own computer so for the next one which is a basic DOS attack uh, denial of service which is DOS stands for is effectively just chucking lots and lots of data at a server or whatever sort of network and over overrunning it, overriding it, and just it it just almost explodes in theory. But um, I think it's probably more likely just to turn off. So to do this one, um, what you do is so you have the computer that I'm going to be sending. So I'm Alice. And then I'm going to be attacking the Google server, so that's my sort of output. And the main bit here is the repeat. So put that on a hundred or maybe even a thousand. But to do this one, I play and I just basically I don't spam it, but I pretty much spam it. You'll see the bar builds up and up and up. It's quite easy, uh, and that's how effectively. DOS attacks work. Uh, so this one is a little bit more complex. So instead of just having one computer, obviously if I try and try and try and I'm spamming it, uh, it's just not going to be enough. 
So we can't just have one computer attacking it. We're going to have four this time. So if I spam, actually, sorry, I need to show you how to do it. So I have zombie zero, and it's going to be attacking Google. I've got it for a hundred times as a repeat. The next one is zombie one, which is this network here. You'll see the IP address is zombie one, and again, it's attacking Google, and it's got a hundred repeat. The next one's zombie two, which is this cell, uh, smartphone device. The third one is well being sent from zombie three, three. But to be honest, I don't really think it matters too much. It's important that you make sure each one is being sent from whatever device. So for that one, actually, just to avoid confusion, I'll set this as zombie three as well. And to do this one, you just spam. Oh, there you go. Just spam all of them. And after four computers all attacking this uh, this system, it it can withstand one device, but it just can't um, withstand all all four of them. Uh, so the next one is a Smurf attack. Now this one's actually quite clever. So. You can only um, send from your one computer, but you are going to effectively get these devices to help help you with it. Um, so without con really controlling it, uh, what you are doing is you're going to you're going to send the data, and then when when it hits this this a router, when it hits this router. And these all would be on the same network. Uh, you're going to make these devices ping back to Google because when I send it, I'm pretending that I'm Google, contacting all these devices and getting them to ping me back. And I've got a thousand times. So I want them to ping me a thousand, which is quite a lot. And then they all try and ping back and they'll attack the server, as you see. Uh, I don't think I have to spam it because I've got it on a thousand. But you'll see all this data is getting flooded. And then all these devices are pinging back. But instead of thinking, oh yeah, that's me pinging them, they think it's the server pinging them. And this server is getting overrun by all these de devices without me, in theory, controlling them. I'm basically tricking them. That's what I guess a Smurf attack is. So after we get through the, the DDoS. DOS attacks. Um, we have the man in the middle. This is actually, I think, the one that took me the longest to figure it out. So, for so for the first one, we have Alice, which is no, I'm Eve. So Alice, and I'm obviously you can only control Eve. So Alice is going to send a network. On let me just. Alice is going to send a packet, but instead of going to its recip recipient, which is Bob, it's going to be going to me because I have access over the router. I guess I have admin controls, uh, so it gets routed to me. But while Bob still needs a connection to be received, so nothing looks out of the normal because this level is about tricking both Alice and Bob, which is this device and that device. Um, we will send a key request with uh, encryption from Alice to Bob, and we are. Um, so let's send that first. That will work its way up to the ra uh, router and then off to Bob. Now Bob will send a key response with our key. Uh, with the encryption from Bob to Alice because he thinks he's still talking to Alice. Now we now need to go from pretend we're still Bob, we'll pretend we're Bob, we, we'll, we're directing it to Alice. Uh, you want to have the key response and set that to 3100. Uh, sorry. Uh, that's not 3,000, sorry, uh, 31,337. Uh, we also, you do get the key right there. So we'll then want to send that. 
so it will send up and then send back to the obviously the receiver and the receiver will send back the mess a message uh, with the key that I've given it and while this isn't Bob's key this is my key which lets me understand I guess the message I believe that's what um it said and finally uh we all, we're still trying to pretend we're Alice, so we're sending from Alice to Bob, uh, having the message that we're sending, and the key that Bob, Bob's key. This is the one he originally sent. So we're obviously going to send the data up and across to Bob. There you go. Now the next. Uh, one is fairly easy again. That one was pretty much the, the major difference. Diff the only ones I found hard were, was that one working out, and the timing on one took me a little while. But the rest are effectively quite easy. This one's censorship. Censorship, sorry. Uh, so we're Alice, and we are going to have to try and get past this. Uh, the sensor device. Now these are the, I guess, the sites we're allowed to, such as this this particular site, and this is the blocked site. Obviously, if you if I go to the the sensor, you will not, or the 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 router or whatever it is will not let me connect to the site I want to connect to. However, to get around that, I'll this sensor doesn't realize that this is basically a way round and we'll just go to the proxy and then the proxy will let me access the uh, site I want. So you get sent up and all you have to do is have you as Alice send it to the proxy. Very very simple. Uh, just Alice proxy and that is it. So I believe this is the, the final level. Uh, this one's quite fun actually. Fairly simple. Quite fun. So to do this one, uh, you'll need to determine all these different routers. So we've all, obviously we know who Alice is, that's us, and we know the server, that's Google. However, the data that's being sent, these are all secret. So we're going to have to figure out what they are. And uh, how have I got that sent? So this one's Waterloo. Uh, that one is Toronto, this one here is New York, and that one is Mountain View. And I believe the way we uh, get that, so if I slow this down, so you'll want Alice and you'll want to send it to Google that goes through this network. And then for the, the protocol you want uh, ICMP which is the ping protocol. and if we if you watch here so we'll send the data and on the TTL we have that set to zero which is very important that will go and that will only go to that router and then we'll be able to see because because it's got zero that means it's only going to do one little jump that is it uh, and we're able to find out that this is Waterloo that, that server is called Waterloo now if we wanted to find out that one, we'd simply change that zero to one, update it, and then when we uh, go to it, it will, because it's not zero, it's this counts as one jump, this counts as another jump. So uh, if we click on that, it's very important to click back onto the purple date, uh, packet we're sending, we're able to find out that's Toronto. Obviously, I've gone through just keep adding one, so the next one would obviously be two, um, and then three. So one, zero, one, two, three, on the TTL bit. So I've obviously figured out. So I've set up uh, four different packets onto Waterloo, which is just a, a simple ping from us, uh, and then another ping to Toronto, which is that one. Another one to Mountain View, which is it's one of them. I think it's that one. And then that one will be New York. Sorry, 
Oak, Mountain View, sorry, New York. Getting a little bit confused. I think I'm clicking on the wrong packets. Sorry about that. Um, so we send that one. That is going to be sent to this secret one, which we know the, the secret anyway. It's Waterloo, and it will just ping it back. So we need to ping the other three. I've just set up three other packets. So if we just click on them all, and let it do its thing. That's pinging that one, that one's going to ping that one, that one's going to ping that one, and then come back to us. There you go. That's uh, that's all the levels. Uh, hopefully this this walkthrough with these tutorials have been uh, has helped you if you're stuck on any of the levels. I couldn't find any methods, and I'm not the greatest at networking, uh, but I just thought I'd uh, share my um, my small amount of knowledge with you. And that is it. Uh, I'd definitely recommend it. I think it's very good if you're a beginner or if you're, I guess, intermediate and you're learning some additional stuff like how to, you know, this is probably, I don't know, I, I generally understand, I don't have the best networking knowledge, but I generally understand all of them, how they work. Um, I guess I didn't know quite about this distribute DOS attack, that's me personally. Actually no, sorry, I didn't know about the Smurf attack where you trick the devices into pinging a different device, which is very clever. But um, yeah, enough, enough of me waffling on. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!